Cruz, I thank you very much for being here at the Straw Poll today and uh, Saddle Up Texas Straw Poll. It was a great reception to the speech that you had for people. And uh, I think you have a great message that you're bringing forward to Texas. What would you like to tell the readers of Texas GOP about what's going on in your race and, and what your plan is for victory? Well, Bob, it's great to be with you. Thank you for uh, taking the time to visit. I'll tell you, this has been a fantastic gathering. Um, we are seeing hundreds of energized grassroots activists, Tea Party leaders, libertarians, people on the ground that are energized about taking our country. And, and that's what the stakes are in this race. You know, to my mind, the Republican primary for U.S. Senate comes down to two simple questions. One, will the next senator from the state of Texas be a strong conservative? And two, will the next senator from the state of Texas be a fighter? Barack Obama has been so radical but we need leadership with a backbone to stand up and lead the fight. It seems to me Texas should lead that fight. My principal opponent, as you know, is David Dewhurst, the lieutenant governor. He had said he was going to come today, and he didn't show up. And I have to admit I wasn't surprised about that, because he has skipped 19 candidate forums all over the state. His view has been the grassroots don't matter, Republican women don't matter, Tea Party leaders don't matter, activists don't matter. Instead, what his campaign believes is he can just write a huge check, he's worth several hundred million dollars, flood the airways with paid television ads, and buy the race. But I'll tell you what, if your listeners are trying to decide which candidate to support, my advice is go check out all of us and ask one simple question. What's your record? Not what do you say, it's easy. Every candidate can say they're conservative. Every candidate can read conservative talking points. Ask instead, what have you done? If you say you believe these principles, one of you stood up and fought for them. As you know, I spent five and a half years as the Solicitor General of Texas. I was appointed by Greg Abbott, in my judgment, the finest Attorney General in all 50 states. During the time I was Solicitor General, over and over again, Texas led the nation defending conservative principles. We defended the Ten Commandments monument on the state capitol grounds, went to the U.S. Supreme Court, we won five million. We defended the Pledge of Allegiance, went to the Supreme Court, won unanimously. We defended the Second Amendment, the right to keep and bear arms. Went to the U.S. Supreme Court, 154. We stood up and fought the EPA and the Endangered Species Act. It's interesting, lots of candidates talk about the EPA right now. If you want to find a strong conservative fighter, don't ask who can give a great speech about the EPA. It's not complicated to give a speech about the EPA. Ask, have you ever stood up and fought the EPA? As the Solicitor General of Texas, I brought together a coalition of states before the U.S. Supreme Court arguing that the Endangered Species Act was unconstitutional. Look to our records. And in this race, I am the only candidate running for Senate who has a proven record of over and over again standing up, fighting for conservative principles, and winning on a national level. One question that has come up as I talk to people about your campaign is, and I hate to get into some of the spouse about an issue, but there's, there's been discussion about your wife's involvement with the CFR, and a lot of grassroots people are very concerned about that. Would you like to talk about that at all? You know, Bob, I'm, I'm happy to answer that. You know, I'd, I'd make three observations. One, this is an issue that is being pushed by some of my political opponents. And it says an awful lot about somebody, another candidate, that they would choose to attack my wife that they would target my spouse. My wife is not running for office, I am. And, and that conveys an awful lot. In fact, I'll tell you, look, the background of this issue. For five years, my wife was what's called a term member of the Council on Foreign Relations. There are thousands of members of the CFP. Uh, she joined it when she left the Bush administration. And she wanted to remain involved in foreign policy issues. And in particular, she wanted to advocate for conservative principles. A lot of people don't know it, but there are a handful of conservatives in the CFR. John Bolton is a member of the CFR. Now, no one's ever, ever accused John Bolton of being a timid liberal, and there are a handful of conservatives in it. She was briefly in it. She was on a task force that issued a paper on North American free trade, and she supports free trade. Now, what my opponents are trying to do is to use the fact that she was one of thousands of members and was a conservative member to call me into question. And in particular, it's worth underscoring who's pushing this. This is the second point. The main campaign that's pushing this is David Dewhurst, and what he's doing is he's encouraging other candidates to fan the flames. And the reason is, if conservatives are divided, if Tea Party activists are divided, if liberty-loving Texans are divided, David Dewhurst wins the race. And so his objective is to pick off 
a handful of voters and split them so that we don't unify conservatives. Now, we've seen conservatives unite to an incredible degree, which is why you're seeing these attacks that are do done surreptitiously on the email, online. And that leads to the third point, and this is really the most important. Listen, the attack is raised because what these other candidates say is they question my willingness to defend U.S. sovereignty. And, and the Council on Foreign Relations, there are a lot of people that have worked to undermine U.S. sovereignty. Let me suggest to you, if you hear a candidate raising this issue, if you hear a supporter of a candidate raising this issue, ask that person, okay, fine, what have you ever done to defend U.S. sovereignty? You know, the irony of this attack, as you know, the biggest fight of my tenure as Solicitor General was a case called Medellin versus Texas. Medellin began with a, a horrible crime in Houston where two teenage girls were gang raped and murdered. And as the Solicitor General of Texas, I stood up and led the fight against the World Court and the United Nations. The World Court issued an order to this country to reopen the convictions of 51 murderers across the country. I argued this case twice in front of the U.S. Supreme Court. Also on the other side were 90 foreign nations and was the President of the United States. The President signed an order attempting to order the state courts to obey the World Court. And so I stood up and fought against the World Court, the United Nations, 90 foreign nations, and the President of the United States defending U.S. sovereignty. And we won 6-3. The irony of this particular attack is there is no candidate in this race who has any record of ever standing up fighting the UN. There's no candidate in this race who has any record of ever standing up defending US sovereignty. I'll tell you, there is not a US Senate candidate in the country who has a record comparable of mine of standing up and fighting to defend US sovereignty. So if you hear a candidate raise this, ask yourself, why are they attacking the guy's wife? But more fundamentally, ask the candidate, okay, you can give a speech against the UN. Giving a speech is easy, particularly on the election stuff. What have you done? Have you ever once stood up and fought to stop the UN? And I have done that over and over and over again. And if you're tired of candidates that, that for whom talk is cheap, who just say what you want to hear, if you hear a candidate talking about this who's never done anything, that ought to give you reason to question if that candidate will do anything in the future. One of the most important things as a U.S. Senator that you're going to have to deal with in the next term will be Obamacare. Yes. And what would your plans be for how do we address Obamacare and take care of that? The first bill I intend to introduce in the U.S. Senate is a bill to repeal every syllable of every word of Obamacare. You know, I led the Center for Tenth Amendment Studies at the Texas Public Policy Foundation. And in doing that, we designed one of the leading legal strategies the states are using to attack Obamacare. It's another perfect example, Bob. Every candidate in this race will say they want to repeal Obamacare. That's the right thing to say on the stump. The question you've got to ask, you've got to look someone in the eyes and say, will this candidate have the backbone to actually stand up and do it? In 2013, there's going to be massive pressure to compromise, to cut the baby in half. If you look at a candidate like David Dewhurst, his record in office over and over again has been a record of compromise. It's been a record of supporting an income tax. It's been a record of proposing bigger and bigger budgets every year. It's been a record of supporting in-state tuition for illegal aliens. It's been a record of killing the bills that would have prohibited sanctuary cities and prohibited TSA growth. It's been a record that frankly would fit in very well in the U.S. Senate. But as you know, that's the problem. So many Republicans in the Senate have not been standing up fighting for principle. In my view, the stakes are too high. On something like Obamacare, every candidate says they will vote to stop Obamacare. I will throw my body in front of a train to stop anything less than a full and total repeal of that abomination. That's the leadership we need. We need the next senator from Texas to be a fighter. Is there anything else that you'd like to tell our readers before before we conclude this? Well, what I'd like to say is if you believe our country's at a crossroads, if you are disturbed by where we are, if you think we're at the edge of a cliff of economic and financial collapse, now's not the time to send another timid career politician to Washington. We've got to have leadership. You know, I'll tell you, the four strongest conservatives of the U.S. Senate 
are Senator Jim DeMint, Senator Mike Lee, Senator Rand Paul, and Senator Pat Toon. I'm incredibly honored and humbled to be the only candidate in the country who all four of them are supporting. And the reason they're supporting me, they were all explicit. They said, we need reinforcements. They're outnumbered. The small contingent of constitutional conservatives are outnumbered by Democrats and they're outnumbered by other Republicans. And the stakes in this race, do we grow their numbers from six or seven to 10 or 12 or 15? And if we do that, regardless of what happens in the presidential race, if we get 10 or 12 or 15 strong free market constitutional conservatives in the Senate, we can drive an agenda to repeal Obamacare, to have fundamental tax reform, to abolish the IRS, to rein in the EPA, to rein in the NLRB, to dramatically shrink the size, power, and spending of the federal government. You know, there will be no senator in the U.S. Senate who is a more vigorous, serious, strategic, and relentless advocate of shrinking the size, power, and spending of the federal government, because that's what I've been doing my whole life. So what I would say to all your listeners is, if you believe Texas should lead that fight, I need your help, I need your support. Please come to our website, tedcruz.org, T-E-D-C-R-U-Z, Org. Join us online, join us on Facebook, join us on Twitter. I can't write a $10 million check to fund my campaign. But what we are doing is building the strongest grassroots army the state's ever seen. The only way to win this race is for conservatives, for Tea Party leaders, for Republican women, for liberty-loving Texans all throughout our state to continue to unite. I need your help. And together, we're going to ensure Texas leads the fight and we turn this country around. Ted, on a personal note, while you were in Washington, D.C., arguing the Jose Medellin case, I was standing on the prison grounds in Huntsville and waiting for that execution to actually take place because that's an issue that we're very concerned about. And I appreciate the work that you did that allowed the United States to maintain its sovereignty because it was directly under attack that night. And you did a great job with the people. Texas and the United States of America. Thank you very much for your time today. I appreciate it. And I uh, look forward to following your campaign as it develops. Thank you, Bob. I appreciate it. You know, it's been an honor to be in a position to be able to stand up and fight for conservative principles, to fight for the Constitution. It's what I've spent a lifetime doing. And there's never been a time when the stakes are higher. And, and I am incredibly encouraged by the outpouring of support we've seen. We've got just over 80 days till April 3rd, till primary day. I think Americans and Texans are rising up to defend liberty and the Constitution, and that's what matters. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Bob.